to about 2023, the Migration Advisory Committee, popularly known as MAC, has published its 2023 review. And one of the things they mentioned in that particular review is the fact that the shortage occupation in the UK should be abolished as it does not serve the purpose why it was created post Brexit. So we're going to be talking around this and also be talking about the uh, you know latest law in relation to students not being able to come into the UK or you know bring dependents while they are studying. Only those who are you know running a PhD research program are allowed to bring their dependents come January 2024. Now we're going to be looking at the flip side of that particular law and how it affects people who are currently in the UK planning to do another master's or those who are coming to the UK afresh for a master's degree in the UK. So if this sounds like something you'd like to know, don't go anywhere, keep watching to the end. And if you're coming across this channel for the first time, please hit the subscribe button to join the amazing growing family. And my returning subscribers, thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. For those who don't know, the Migration Advisory Committee, MAC, is an independent body that advises the government on um, you know, migration. And basically, their job really is for them to do like an analysis of what exactly is happening in um, you know UK immigration in general and they make like recommendations to the government on what the government should put in place to ensure that uh, migration or immigration is being controlled basically. So yeah, the MAC is majorly like an independent body. They are not influenced by the government. They're like the middleman, you know, um, that make recommendation in relation to migration. And, you know, in the past, they've made quite a number of migrations, um, you know, made quite, quite a number of, um, you know, recommendations to the government as regards what they should do. And one of the ones they've made, you know, um, based on their publication um, in October, basically, is that the social occupation should be abolished. And their reason is really around um, the going rate. For those who don't know what going rate is, I'm going to be explaining that shortly in this video, you know, and how some employers are not really announcing the purpose why their um, shortage occupation list was created. Now, for a start, um, the shortage occupation list is a list of job roles in the UK where demand exceeds supply. So basically, um, you know, after Brexit, the UK government discovered that there are certain um, you know, job roles in the UK that are uh, there are no professionals taking up those jobs. So many organizations find themselves in situations whereby after Brexit, uh, you know, people from the EU countries decide to leave the UK and go back to their countries, and this created like a gap or you know, um, on the UK economy. So, some occupations needed people that could fill in, and of course, the UK government had to um, rely on foreign workers to be able to help with this. So, after Brexit, um, you know. Uh, before Brexit, the short occupation list had more significance as rules which fell under the list were exempt from the resident labor market test, popular known as the RMLT. Now, that's a 28 day obstacle to sponsorship. Now, with the rumor of the um, RMLT um, in the new post Brexit immigration system, the short occupation list now mainly serves to offer a discount on minimum salary rates and lower home office application fee for skilled worker visa application. Now, for those who have probably applied for the skilled worker in the UK, you would know that one of the questions being asked during the application is for you to confirm if the job you um, the job offer you recently goes with an employer is part of the church occupation. So basically, um, it really has its own significance, really. Um, you know, some organization or some of, you know, these visa applications for those who are under the church occupation list, they get like quicker decision on the application because the government understand that they needed, uh, they actually need these people whose job role is under the church occupation list. So if you don't know what is short occupation list, you can go on the UK government website to check out the different, um, you know, job roles under the shortage occupation list. Now, for those who are on the short occupation list, uh, you know, for some of them, especially those in the health sector, they get to enjoy some discounts in relation to the application. For instance, those of the health and care visa don't pay IHS fee, for example. However, some other short occupation list, uh, you know, within the health and care sector that you need to pay IHS fee, you can always request a refund, you know, a couple of months after you, uh, you know, start your new job role. And also, um, you know, so what the uh, MAC, basically, uh, the Migration Advisory Committee is saying is that now for people who, uh, you know, are 
getting jobs under the short quotient list, they believe that the short quotient list no longer fits the purpose. They have recommended that it should be abolished. The basis of this recommendation is that no employer should be able to pay below the going rates, uh, irrespective of shortages. Low wage employment is at higher risk of serious exploitation and more so for migrants reliant on being employed by sponsoring firm to remain in the United Kingdom. Now, if you're applying for a skilled worker visa in the UK, uh, one of the requirements is that the job you're applying should meet a certain salary um, um, requirements. And basically for skilled worker, it is £26,200 per year, or you must be earning £10.75 per year. And the last condition is that the going rate uh, for the type of job you'll be doing. So what uh, most people do is that because of the change of occupation, many of these going rates is actually below the standard rate for uh, a skilled worker in the UK. So what Mark is saying basically is that now many of these employers, because they need a lot of people to take up the job, they are now paying below the going rate, which is more of like an exploitation on you know people who are coming to the country to work. And because these people are you know they need the sponsors to be able to remain in the uk they can't complain so yeah the few the shuttle question list is no longer meeting the purpose while why, why it was created in the first place and it also raises um, that uh it also raises the point that low wage sector uh, businesses are less likely to sponsor individuals due to administrative bodies and application fee involved in sponsoring now if the going rate discount is removed the strategic occupation list essentially becomes redundant. However, if the government decides to retain the strategic occupation list, the MAC also recommend that it be renamed the salary discount list to reflect its true function. Now, because professionals are needed in this particular field under the strategic occupation list, the government gives them like an opportunity to, you know, uh, decide the going rate for that particular job so instead of saying oh the, the minimum wage or the minimum salary you should pay anyone on the skilled worker visa is twenty six thousand. now if you're getting a job under the schedule commission list there's a special going rate for the salary requirements it can be less than twenty six thousand. you don't necessarily for instance the health and care visa you don't necessarily need to earn twenty six thousand to be able to get the health and care visa if you're earning as low as twenty four to twenty three to twenty two thousand pounds you can apply for the skilled worker visa under the health sector so that's what the going rate the um, you know the mark is really talking about now while many businesses may not be affected by the removal of the going rate discount to salary thresholds those who sponsor workers that fall under the list such as tech businesses where several roles qualify will feel the loss of application fee the Home Office increased application fee in October 2023 by 15 to 35 percent. The loss of the discount provided under the shortage occupation list will therefore serve as another fee hike for these businesses. So, for businesses that take up responsibility for their employees, uh, you know, uh, visa application fee is going to be a lot of financial burden for them. So, which is one of the things that Mark is trying to. And if they decide to really stop this occupation list, it's going to affect so many people because some jobs, you know, uh, might not be able to meet the salary threshold requirements for the skilled worker visa. Therefore, people who are uh, under this or were able to get a job under the shortage occupation list might not be able to qualify for the skilled worker visa. Now, that thing that people have really been talking about is in relation to the dependent visa. Now, the question is for someone who is already in the UK and, you know, probably towards the end of his program or after post work visa, decides to go back to school for a master's program. I remember this individual already came into the UK with his family um, before the January 2024 rule uh, comes into play. The question I will so if someone is applying for, let's say for instance, a student visa, let's say in January 2025, and don't forget he has, the person has his family already in the UK, but the rule now is that if you're on a student visa from January 2024, you can't bring in your dependent. So what happens to such individual? Will the family have to go back to their own country because they can't apply as dependent on their you know, uh, primary sponsor's visa who is applying, let's say, January 2025? Now, this is really an important question that has really got me thinking and I would like to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section. So if you find this video, you also click on the like button. If you have any question, please state it in the comment section. And if you're coming across my channel for the first time, Please hit the subscribe button to join the amazing Goy family and my returning subscribers. Thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So this will be the end of this video and I will see you guys in my next video.
Thank you.